Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, guys. Uh, this is lesson number eight. So on lesson number eight, I want to focus strictly on entries and exits. I will be looking at candlestick patterns, multiple week formations. I will be looking at inside bar formations. I will be looking at counter trend lines. Um, and I think I've touched a bit on that on the previous video, but I will be going a bit in depth on that and, to, and knowing the difference between a breakout and a fakeout. Uh, and knowing the difference between uh, and knowing and actually being able to identify rejection. Sorry. So I'll be selecting a clean chart for this uh, lesson. So I don't want to actually work on a chart that has been worked on before. Uh, I will be using a chart that only has uh, these monthly zones. And I'm going to try and at least, uh, you know, try and cover an analysis. I'm gonna do an analysis and then actually, before I do that, let me let me cover, um, let me actually do an analysis, it's fine. Let me go to, let me go to a chart, let me go to a chart, uh, USD pairs, uh, let me go to Euro USD for the sake of uh, this lesson. So obviously, you will draw all the lines on your charts, draw the daily lines. Actually, I think I need to do a, I need to do an empty chart. I need to do an empty chart. Let me go to UJ. Yes. So on UJ, guys, I have these zones marked out. Um, let me just delete the relevant ones on the charts and then um, have all the relevant lines ready. So you would have had your monthly levels on the charts. Let me just go to a full screen view. You would have had the levels on your charts and you want to actually find a trade, right? So what I would do is I would try and identify levels on the charts that I can use to actually help me find entry points, to help me find entry points and to help me identify proper entries and exits. The first thing that I would do, I've got the weeklies and monthlies and I would then look for the dailies, meaning I would go to the daily time frame to actually identify daily levels that we have. First of all, we have this level from the left hand side. Once again, I'm using the close and the open of these two bodies, dragging it across the charts to actually identify the closest level that we have. And I can see that right at the top of this wick, we have got some kind of sensitivity that is happening which would have helped me with my entries for the day and again i do see that this support level has been a level that has been kind of a problem i'm gonna mark out this level as well to actually know what i can do then moving forward all right so this is what i have so i've got that general level at 107.159 and I've got these two zones that the market is stuck in. Then I'm gonna zoom into the smaller time frame, the H4 to be specific. When I get to the H4, I can maybe try and modify these levels to something that makes a bit more sense than, uh, than what we have on the charts right now. So I can maybe take up that, uh, that, that rectangle tool to the close of the open of these two candles. So I can see that the market has been struggling around this level. So the market has been ranging around these levels and there's a high chance that we can actually see a drop on this level. And if not a push to the upside, we can get a break out of this level and a retest of this level. And from there, we can see this immediate support from the daily, right? So from there, I'm going to then zoom into a smaller time frame to help me understand entries. So smaller time frames, what am I looking for? There is both these open and close of these two weeks. I'm going to mark those out as well. So mark them out. Remember, guys, we want to identify levels of entries. And we want to see what it is that we can use to actually get entries, right? So when I zoom in, I can see. So this is the H4 level. So this is the four hourly level. How I got that level is I drew a line. So a line from the open and, and close of these two bodies. And I put it at the tip of that wick. 
I put it at the tip of that wig, which is almost the same. So this line touches all wigs and also touches the open and the close of the body. Refer to previous videos to actually understand how we can draw these levels. Then I can go to the H4, H1. And the only thing that I would wait for is to get a dip into that level. Then I can then get entry. So how you can basically get entries is through the break out of these smaller time frame levels. Look at this level over here. I'm going to be doing this, guys. It's there literally throughout the markets, throughout the markets, right? So this line. So the open and the close of all those four wicks and the median level so you can see that that it touches one two three wicks at the bottom then you can see how we came to spike through this level if you zoom into 30 minutes you would have seen how you would have gotten a clean entry around these levels so this would have been an anticipated level of entry for me and this would have been the first target obviously a break past this target would have led us to that level over there because then that's the next immediate support we have so right now how you would have gotten entries is you would have honestly gotten entries around this level right so there's specific things that we look for around these levels number one being multiple wicks to that level so if the market is waking look at that we've got one two three four five six seven eight weeks on that level meaning that's a level that has been holding strongly i mean if you've got eight weeks waking to that level then that's actually a strong level look at this right if you go to the hourly time frame you will see how much we wait to that level so we've got one two three weeks to the high before we actually started seeing this roll over so you look at the weeks to the high for you to get entries so the multiple week formation consists of the number of weeks that you have look at this even on support areas look at that you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten weeks to the high and the market pushes to the upside so the market tends to give you multiple weeks to a specific area whenever it is going to move out of that level so you need to pay attention and note how the market actually forms around those levels so from here you can play around different time frames to understand this. So looking at this, right, looking at this on the four hourly, we actually broke out of this level. So how you can actually identify breakouts, you can see full candle closure below that level to identify a breakout. And then that retest is what we are actually trading. We're not trading this candle. We're going to wait for the market to come back retest that level then we can actually sell from that level to the next immediate support so if you look at this this is beautiful there's a lot of confirmations on this chart so the market broke past this level number two the moving averages are about to cross i'm pretty sure that when we go to the h1 they have actually crossed look at that they crossed over there confirming the beginning of a new trend which would have given us an entry as well. And number two now, the moving averages are crossing on the H4 to even confirm the lock of that drop. And if you look at the general bias of what is happening on the H4, we do have a range in market. So the market pushes up and down, up and down, up. And from here, we do expect that the market can come back here. So this can be a level that we can anticipate on the chart. So you would have gotten an entry using these levels, these breakouts. You would have gotten entries. And again, if you go to the smaller time frame, right? So this is another thing that you can actually observe and monitor as you are trading right so you do have this level so i i, I refrain from using smaller time frames because um smaller time frames don't really give us what is really happening so uh we have a lot of noise on the smaller time frames and we can actually abandon good trade simply because of what is happening on a smaller time frame and again you can even stay on failing trades if you um, if you don't really look at smaller time frames and even know what is happening on smaller time frames so if you go to the m15 let's see what is happening on the m15 you can actually see that we actually broke out of this level and the m15 is currently retesting this level i do expect that this m15 should leave a spike so if we get a spike on this level so if the market closes below this level then i can actually come in and take this trade to the next available support which in this case would be that level so a close below this line 
would be a lab, would be an entry for me to quite honest with you that would have been um, uh, an entry point for me to actually enter this trade and short it to that 107 level 107 460 that's a good 20 pips that's an intraday move on uj remember that uj is actually a very slow moving pair so i would then enter this trade to the next available support so i'm going to be doing this across different pairs different uh, things that we can actually look at remove trend tools let me see what do we have on this chart let me see uh okay nearly deleted important stuff nearly deleted important stuff so again how i would have traded this market how i would have traded this market look at what is currently happening right now you can see that okay the market is actually setting up for a bullish run how do i see that i see that by looking at this low sorry looking at this low you do see that we've got this low and we've got that high which in this case that high then became a ranging market so this whole high this whole high then became a ranging market and that higher low also um held we did have a low a higher high and a higher low if you look at this you must look at it uh, in this perspective you do have a low a higher a, a high and this is a higher low and the market is currently giving us a higher high. So if we come back, give us a higher low, then we can actually see a higher high. So the market is setting up nice for a bullish run uh, on this case. But what I would have done, honestly, the first thing that I would I would do on this market, I would identify relevant levels. So from the closing the open of these two bodies from them, uh, and then uh, try and at least uh, adjust them and modify them according to what I can logically see. So I, I can use this highest level because uh, this is where the market tends to like, um, you know, not break the most. So that's like the highest, strongest resistance we have on this market. So you can see that we have a bounce and bounce and we have that third bounce over there that we just broke out of this level. We didn't really come to touch it. So we haven't really come to tap it. I wouldn't have taken this trade to be quite honest with you because we wouldn't have come to touch this. So the only safest trade for me would be seeing this market Market, dipping into that into that zone so if you see a dip into that zone leave multiple weeks this kind of formation before we go up then I would then uh, set up my my entries for longs looking at this immediate level for a, an anticipated target again you can uh, include, the, include the use of Fibonacci and everything else that we did to actually kind of understand where the next possible move can be right so you, you can actually use that again on these levels of fib if we're looking at entries we're going to look at that multiple week formation as well look at how the market is now waking to the bottom look at that you've got one two three four five six seven eight weeks to the bottom and then the market just rises close above moving averages crosses over comes back to retest this broken level of resistance from uh, here hope you guys are following from here uh, you do see that we've got that level of resistance one two three four five spikes and the market breaks out comes back to retest that spiked level from the left hand side from there uh, we have that uh, moving average cross over that level retest that from here we just had a rise exactly to negative 27 so negative 27 just got hit like now you just got hit now if you really like extend this to the right this is when the negative 27 actually got hit. But this would have been a clean trade, honestly. First immediate target would have been that resistance level. If we break past that resistance level, then we obviously look at that negative 27. So I hope you guys are really getting these things. So I covered the multiple week formation. Um, I covered uh, the, the FIB the FIB and the difference between a breakout and a rejection. Uh, the difference between the, the breakout and the rejection would obviously be uh, the close of the candle above a level. So like, let's go to this area over here. So the market gave us uh, a rejection from the wicks. So it gives us multiple wicks at a level for us to know that it's rejecting. And it gives us full candle closures for us to know that it actually broke past that level. So these are the things that we we'll look at before we can actually take a trade even here like you can see how we actually um we actually got like wigs waking at the bottom meaning that this level was actually holding that whole area was an area of wigs actually and then from there you did see a bullish run but here we did get a clean bearish closure 
from that level, then this was actually a clear indication that we're actually like um, trending down. So again, how would you know that the market is faking on? Obviously, we don't just take trades based on the close above the level. We wait for the market to retest, give us a clean uh, rejection on that support level. But if we get a close below that level, then we know that th that was a fake cut. So we wouldn't have traded that level, that, that trade, honestly, because that would have been a fake out of that level then the market came back below retested that level then it started dropping to the downside so we don't just trade now, the next formation that i want to talk about is an inside bar formation so an inside bar formation is made out of these wicks uh, these candles sorry so you would obviously draw uh, a line from the tip of the from the top of that candle to the low of that candle so you can actually like drag this to the right look at that so the market did give you that inside bar formation from the H4. And I think if you zoom into the H1, then you will see like a beautiful trade setup that would have come out of this kind of a formation. So you draw that from the H4. If you spot it on the H4, look at that close above and then the market came to retest that level. This would have been a clean entry for a buy. So inside bar formation is when the market is ranging within one candlestick. So if you look at that, we did get like a range from just this one candle. So the market did trade within this candlestick and then we actually got a break out from this one and the market started, started rallying to the upside. So you can check these, they happen at support and resistance levels. So mostly these setups would be high probability setups because then a break out of an inside bar formation means that the market will actually move towards that anticipated directional bias or right, towards that anticipated direction of bias. So do check these out, uh, Google them, try and see more patterns, more formation of these inside bar formations. And then obviously candlestick patterns, you want to look at uh, spinning tops, you want to look at hanging mats, you want to look at uh, dojis. And if you look at this, you do have um, a doji over there. So this, this candle would be a doji, this would be a spinning top, this would be a shooting star, this would have been a hammer. So look at those candlesticks. So a shooting star, spinning top, doji, hammer. Uh, those are my main candles that I look at. So do look out for those and make sure that you familiarize yourselves with those. So these happen in support and resistance. You only take trades based on these formations by support or resistance. You don't just take them anyway. These are basically very much accurate. I'm going to show you uh, how these would have formed also um, on this chart. So look at that. You did have uh, a, literally a hammer pattern right at support you did have a spinning top at that level you do have a hammer again and then the market just pushes up so these these formations do happen either at support or resistance levels look at that you do have a doji pattern at resistance that the market just started crumbling to the downside and from here as well you do have this previous level that got broken so i'm going to draw that level so you can see what i'm trying to uh, talk about so you do have that level that got broken over there Look at that market came, gave you that uh, that indecision candlestick, which does look like a doji, then came and spiked that level, then it actually went down. So look at how the multiple spike formations happen at support. Look at how these uh, these candlestick patterns happen at support. So you look at those patterns for you to actually understand what is happening. And then again, counter trend line breakouts, you can actually use those for entries. I'm gonna be demonstrating how you can use those for entries. So the market is pushing up and then all of a sudden gives you a counter trend line move and then a counter trend move, sorry, then you can actually uh, start drawing a line there. And then once you see a breakout, then you take a trade going up, right? So again, you can actually like try and adjust your trend lines, take this week over there, and maybe put it on that week over there. You can see that's still a valid breakout, moving averages cross over and then the market just went to the upside. So you look at those kind of things to actually understand. So now this brings me to my last point of this video, the, the risk to reward ratio that you would use, right? So whenever you take a trade, right? So suppose you're actually trading uh, this move. So the higher the time frame, the larger the risk. So I do prefer using smaller time frames to actually minimize my risk appetite for me to actually know that, okay, my risk will be very smaller than uh, whatever risk I would have used on a high time frame. Suppose I, I come into the chart and the market is already moving. It has already moved 
from that level, I can clearly see that all of this, like whatever is happening around here, like there's just a level of support, or whatever. There's a level of sensitivity that's happening. So if I w I wanted to catch this trade, I would obviously wait for the market to break past this level. So this would have been my trade. So I would have tried and uh, actually shorted this trade literally at the retest of that level, at the retest and targeting the next possible support level, which in this case would have been um, using previous market would have been this level over here. So this would have been the level of anticipation based on the previous market. Obviously I would have had uh, this whole thing happening from the left and this would have been my target, honestly. And then my stop loss would be slightly above this level because I do understand that a break above this level would mean that my trading uh, idea would have been violated. So my stop loss would have been slightly above the previous high because if we break past the previous high, then obviously um, we have violated the trading idea. So I, I, I make room for stop losses and everything. So I would obviously uh, literally risk uh, 339 pips for um, for how much? For 1,678 pips. So this would have been a beautiful trade. Uh, if you look at it, 300 pips to 1,600 pips, that's a beautiful risk to reward ratio. So I'm literally risking 3.39 and my target is 16.78. So my risk to reward would, would have been three to 16. So I'm risking three, three pips for 16 pips, which is uh, quite beautiful. So I would have risked that amount to get that amount. So this would have been a beautiful risk to reward ratio, especially uh, if I take trades on a smaller time frame. So smaller time frames give us like a slightly better risk to reward ratio. So this guys is how I would have honestly dealt with my entries and my risk management and stuff. So I hope this really helps. Once again, you can rewind the videos to find out um, more information to actually understand what is the trying to get across on this video and again i will see you on the next video